welcome to the You Make a Difference Activism and Picture Books panel. I'll, uh, let me start. Um, we'll have each of us introduce ourselves. Um, tell us maybe what your latest book is and where you're calling in from. Um, I'm Carol Lindstrom. I'm an author of children's books. I'm also uh, one of the moderators of the panel. Um, and my latest picture book is We Are Water Protectors. And I'm calling in from Maryland. Hi, I'm Michaela Goad. I am co-moderating with Carol, and I'm the illustrator for We Are Water Protectors, which is um, my most recent book. And I'm also just a picture book maker, illustrator, uh, graphic designer, artist from Juneau, Alaska, where I also live. Um, but right now I'm calling in from Sitka, Alaska. Hi, I'm Mahogany L. Brown, and I I'm the author of the most recent Woke, A Young Poet's Call to Justice. I'm also the author of Woke Baby and Black Girl Magic. And I'm calling you from Brooklyn, New York. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, my name is Marcy Colleen. I am also a children's author. Um, I have picture books, uh, Penguinaut and Love Triangle. My latest is called The Bear's Garden, which is set in Brooklyn. And uh, but I'm currently living in and calling in from San Diego, California. The one thing I want to say, but before we start to is I, is I thought it's so interesting how you both had that connection to Brooklyn and Matt Marcy, now you're in California. And I just thought that was interesting. And I just <laughs> love that you both had a connection to Brooklyn. And I'm and from cool. California. That's what I thought. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. we swap spots. That's <laughs> exactly. That's my I'm very mood. jealous. Full I circle. I think that's cool. Anyway, sorry to interrupt. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. <laughs> um, first of all, just wanted to you know say good exchange and thank you everyone for being here with us today, and um, we hope you're all safe and well, and um, we're just really happy to be to be taking part in this and you know um, joining other book creators and doing something a little bit more creative. Um, to reach everybody, so thank you. Yeah. And we thought we would start things off um, by first, you know, mentioning that we have a the books we're talking about today represent a wide range of activism. We have some more like quieter, more localized, community focused activism, and then we have more powerful um, celebrations and and universal calls to action. And we thought that was uh, really interesting and could lead to some you know different perspectives and um, great conversation. So. That being said, thought we'd just dive in and thought we could each, uh, and I'll start with you, Carol, that we could each sort of speak to um, the unique themes of activism in each of our books and, you know, how, uh, what was the message you're hoping to convey to readers and, you know, how did you go about choosing to communicate that, um, you know, particularly to a young audience? Thanks, Michaela. Um, well, I think uh, for me, I just saw so much of myself in the character. The character was me um, because I felt so helpless and so, you know, what can I do? It's just, it's just me here, um, you know, whoever age you are, even me at my um, older age. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to help and I didn't know how. So I felt like, you know, the story, um, telling a story, but it's not just my story. It's everyone's story who feels like, what can I do? You know, you one person can make such a big difference. And so that's kind of the way it, what this story was about to me is being just, you know, not just one, because one is such a powerful thing that you can make a difference and don't ever feel that you can't. So I guess that was really my main like thought when I wrote the book. Marcy or Mahogany, you guys um, wanna? So The Bear's Garden is a picture book um, inspired by a real community garden in my old neighborhood in Brooklyn, New York. And um, basically, it's the story, it, it's it's a um, prequel to the actual garden in which the fact that uh, the garden is called the Brooklyn Bears Community Garden. And living in that neighborhood, I often wondered, as writers do, we start asking ourselves whys and hows and you know what could be all the time. And uh, I was really curious as to why it was called the Brooklyn Bears Community Garden. And through research found out that it was named after a stuffed teddy bear that was found in the weeds in that abandoned lot when workers mm -hmm. first started to work. And so 
I immediately, the teddy bear to me as a picture book author is immediate and in for kids, right? <laughs> like, wait a minute, community garden, teddy bear. There's something here for kids. Um, and so I wanted to write the story of how that bear may have come to be in the weeds and behind that created this protagonist of a young girl who takes pride in her neighborhood and finds beauty absolutely everywhere. I'm a city girl, so I truly believe that even a oil slick in a puddle is beautiful. That's a rainbow too. <laughs> I love the city. And so I kind of wrote this as a love letter to the city and how you can impact that city around you. Um, and in this case, through the community gardens. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> just looking at Woke, A Young Poet's Call to Justice, it's a book I was able to uh, produce with several other authors um, specifically poets. I'm a poet first. And so coming to find the children's lit and, and picture books as another place to place a poem, to put a poem and let it live. Um, I was interested in what that could do. Uh, so with this book, this anthology of poems, we are talking about the building blocks of larger social justice themes. Um, so instead of just saying, let's talk about restorative justice, we're talking about forgiveness, something that's so small and tangible to a young person and giving them the building block to understand these larger themes when they're, you know, they grow up and they have a, an understanding of nuance. Um, so every poem in here discusses activism, ableism, allyship, body positivity, community, empathy, equality, forgiveness, freedom fighters, gender, immigration, intersectionality, individuality, joy, justice, prejudice, privilege, protest, resistance, resourcefulness, silencing, stereotyping, volunteering, and what it means to be woke. Wow. That's awesome. All of everything you said. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was really fun. One poem to just unpack a little bit of that. Um, you know, we really just, I was really interested in just having these conversations with young people. Um, they are the global citizens of tomorrow and we need to start doing the work now rather than trying to tap into this, you know, these large and looming ideas. Um, when, when they're 13 and 14 and 15 and everything they've been reading up until then, um, it doesn't give them a shot, you know, to just mm -hmm. be really aware and be, and, mm -hmm. and be an actualized uh, citizen in the making. I love that. It's, I kind of like to refer to that as finding the back door to those bigger messages or those mm -hmm. bigger stories, you know, mm -hmm. because, um, I'll read a lot of manuscripts and texts that are about environmentalism because that's, it's a passion of mine. And, you know, something that struck me about Carol's was that it's finding that seed of a story or that back door through something that's much bigger. And yes. um, like you're saying, it's relatable and approachable and can invite uh, young readers in and, you know, and help inspire and motivate them. Yeah. Um, and so I can just tack on a little bit to what Carol was saying about for the illustration side for We Are Water Protectors, uh, clearly, you know, it's about environmental justice, indigenous rights, which are also human rights. Um, it's very universal in that. And through the illustrations, through the art, uh, I was really trying to, you know, well, communicate on many levels and a lot of ideas, but some of my big takeaways was I wanted um, community and unity and then diversity within that unity. Mm. So, you know, showing all sorts of nations through regalia, uh, traditional clothing or contemporary clothing, skin colors, ages, uh, a lot of circular imagery and motifs. Um, that, you know, I could speak more to that art art side. Uh, and so I just was hoping to, to support what Carol was saying through her words. Mm. Yeah. I, beautifully, uh, I might add. Yeah. I just want to add that beautifully. Your book is stunning. Oh, yeah, she is much. so talented. I'm not worthy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, like that leads into a great, the next question that we have. Um, so like taking the themes of activism that we just that we just discussed in our books and your books, what are some ways that children can begin to practice uh, the activism in their own homes um, or their own communities? You know, what whatever ways that could be. What and we get off asked this question a lot, and I think it's a really good one. What can they do, no matter what it is, as we are talking about? But what do you guys suggest um, that they they could do, perhaps? Mm -hmm. I love. Um, I love this book because the things that I just remembered 
uh, being asked to consider, like, be nice. But that's that's the easy way of just saying, you know, like, be a community yeah. member. But when you say not be nice, because yay, but like, it's bigger than that. What does it mean to be empathetic and to be compassionate? And then to like, give the definition of those things through everyday tangible, you know, lessons. So yeah. the whole sharing is caring, that's community building. Um, forgiveness, that's community building. I think um, us thinking about what does it mean to be someone who is a part of an ecosystem, you know, uh, th that's a part of building a community and really um, allowing them to see who they are in the world and how they can change it. Mm -hmm. I think um, for me, it's interesting in when when the election happened in 2016 i remember having this conversation with my my therapist in the fact that i said to her that um i i felt a little lost because i'm not a protester. I'm not a make a bunch of signs and go out and march. And I, yes, I did that with the Women's March and a few other things, but I'm not somebody who's going to spend every single day calling my congressman and, and doing. And so I felt a little bit like, where do, am I doing this wrong? And um, in looking at the Bears Garden, I realized exactly what my therapist told me, which is like, no, 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 trust your gut. What do you want to do? What do you want it? What do you, what are you moved for? What, what do you, what do you want to make a difference with? And um, the girl in the Bears Garden is, she's not setting out to be an activist per se. I mean, if you look up the definition of activism, I think the first definition is about aggressively campaigning for something. And she's certainly not doing that. But what she's doing is through her actions, she's literally being the change and she's modeling for somebody else what what she would like to see happen in this abandoned lot. And she's doing it quietly and she's doing with her it with her own authenticity. And sure enough, you know, when, when you start to do that, sometimes all of a sudden through your periphery, you start to see other people starting to join you. And um, so because of those actions in the book, the community garden is born. And I, I look this morning, I was out for my run and I see all these kids that have done like chalk art outside where they're telling us, you know, you're awesome. You're going to get through this. This shall pass. And I'm just like, that is activism because right. what you are doing is you are taking action to make a difference and you are following your heart. So I can do that. I can. I. I feel compelled to do chalk art. I feel compelled to do those things. So a lot of times, it's coming down to who are you and embracing who you are and realizing that you have a place and a voice. Also, it just might not always look like everybody else's place and everybody else's voice. Right. Yeah. I just think activism has so many ways of existing. I love that. Um, act, there yes. isn't one way to be an activist. There isn't one way to show up for a community. There isn't one way to um, to change people's minds. And chalk art can do it. And urban gardening can do mm -hmm. it. And you know, volunteering can do it. Mm -hmm. Picking up someone's groceries, babysitting. All of those things are a part of community building. So once we we reimagine what activism is and understand that someone doing their everyday thing of just being a person in our community and being reliable is a, like, that is a point of activism too. You know, you teaching online, mm -hmm. this, us creating this panel in the midst of a pandemic <laughs> is activism. Yeah. Like that it's it, like, we are doing our parts too. It's like the yes. world right now is calling us all to be activisms in our own way, to bring the best parts of ourselves to the forefront and to use that to make a difference. It's like we're all being asked to do that on an hourly basis in these mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. I think so. I agree with you totally. I think it's just what you're saying. Uh, it's just like a matter of just being respectful and no matter what, respectful of everything is activism, respectful of the planet, respectful of the water, respectful of life, respectful of each other, that we're all connected. Because we all, I mean, I think about the virus in a sense of like how, what a way to show how we're connected. I mm. mean, we can make a difference so much in other people's lives if we just stay home if we yeah. just care if we just care it doesn't hurt it's not much to ask not for what we get in return 
Mm -hmm. is people living and not dying, not yes. overtaxing the healthcare system. I want to cry just talking about it because really it's so simple. But it's connection is that we can do it. And it's such a simple thing as staying home. Mm -hmm. And yes, it stinks sometimes when you're a little person. It stinks when you're a big person. But <laughs> it's, it's so worth it, right? Yes. So yes. these little things of activism are huge, huge, just to grin and bear it, just to, for, you know, just to get through, because we will, and we will get through, yeah, we always will, so yes, I think the activism is as much as what you want it to be, as little, everything you do, everything you do to, to stand up for what you know is right, is activism, against mm -hmm. your, you know, when your friends say something and you know it's wrong, just saying, no, I know that's not right. And even if mm -hmm. you hear a flack in return, you've planted something in that mind or those minds that you don't even know about, right? Mm -hmm. So and that can be so hard as a, as a yeah. child. That is a big form of courage. I remember growing yes. up, I'm, you know, I'm mixed race. And so I, um, I heard and saw and witnessed a lot of acts of uh, racism and aggression might grow to, you know, big, large scale because a lot of people just didn't think I was native. And, and you know, it took a long time for me to have that courage and, and to stand up and speak. Um, so even like you're saying, I think that's a great question, you know, just um, what is activism to you or... Yeah. And it's true. It is such a wide range. And we have been getting this question a lot because, you know, water protectors, it's, it's uh, it's really resonating because I think um, we were a little concerned at this time, actually, you know, releasing a book and, oh my gosh, but it's actually been really interesting to see how it's taken on new meaning in the context of this pandemic. And, and one of the big messages is, you know, we're all connected um, to each other, our indigenous neighbors and allies, but not just them, everybody and, and mother earth and plants and animals. And so getting this question has been interesting. Like what are some, actual um, actionables that, that people uh, can take and things as small as learning where your water comes from uh, in your community, uh, in your hometown, uh, talking to water as Carol and I like to mm -hmm. talk about and talking mm -hmm. to plants and animals mm -hmm. and the natural world, uh, just starting to build that, that mutual respect, um, yeah. looking up local organizations, environmental organizations, uh, volunteering, like Mahogany was saying, uh, just look for ways to start getting involved uh, and feel part of that community and be build community within your own little community, and that radiates out. So, yeah, it's interesting, you know, because Carol was saying about, um, you know, actually, Michaela, you were just saying this too about like how this book it seems to be like the perfect time for it in the mm -hmm. pandemic, and mm -hmm. I've heard that a lot about the Bears Garden too, where people are like, this is the perfect book for today, and. It's interesting because that just proves to me <laughs> that those of us who are art artists and writers and poets, like we're, we, we know these things, people. <laughs> yeah. We know these things, we live these things. I did not write this book to come out during a global pandemic, but you know, those truths still exist. Like we, we, we are, we are shouting and in so often people, especially in times like this, they need to hear the messages of those books. It just elevates the need for mm -hmm. books like this, but um, there are so many of us who do realize the importance, re regardless of whether or not the world is, you know, fighting a, a global pandemic. Mm -hmm. That's good. Oh, I guess that's me. Um, <laughs> well, we're starting. <laughs> we're starting to get into one of our other questions when we were saying, yeah. "What does it mean to be writing and illustrating children's books in these times?" Mm. Um, which isn't surprising because that's really on all of our minds, I think. And I just mm -hmm. wanted to add in one thing, you know, with, with water protectors too, um, it's shedding a much needed light on um, just inequality that's already existed long in, in, you know, more specifically in indigenous native communities. Um, you know, for example, clean your, wash your hands, wash your hands. They, a lot of these Navajo and like think Navajo and Hopi nations, like, uh, they're being hit really hard by this. And I was listening to a podcast this morning on my relations and another uh, tribe uh, health group in Seattle got body bags and just things like that. And then Navajo and Hopi, like they don't, reservations don't always have access to running water, something we all take for granted. And so it's really bringing to light these um, deep rooted uh, systems of oppression and marginalization. And these are like life, um, was a life or death? And so that's also what you're saying, just um, 
a, a thing we didn't foresee uh, being talked about with this with this pandemic and this book, but um, it's it's been really great uh, to help shed some light on that. So, okay, anyways, um, so go into a question a little bit more behind the scenes. Um, you know, activism often becomes political and that can create fear. And so in, in the more a little world of kidlet, sometimes that can be tricky to navigate. So how as book creators um, do you navigate this area of balancing your passions and beliefs with a feeling that you should soften things for the non um, person of color or BIPOC uh, reader, or do you even struggle with that? Perhaps you don't. I know it's something Carol and I have, have talked at length about. Um, many times. And so maybe Carol, you wanna just chime in there and, and get it rolling? Yeah, sure. Um, I, yes, um, definitely I do struggle with this. Um, I think because um, just growing up um, as a Ojibwe, Métis, um, and then also Swedish bits from my father, um, I didn't know who I was a lot. And I, when I did find out who I really, I was so ashamed of myself and who I, and I, when I saw books about um, me, um, I was just even more ashamed because God, I'm a savage and I'm, you know, horrifying. I'm not like that really, but um, you know, that's how I was portrayed. So um, I, it was, I, it's always been a struggle. I think um, now for me when I write, because, I have to think about, I sort of navigate then with a kid, what I do now when I write. Um, how are people not um, of color going to interpret this? Um, are they going to be offended if they're the white reader, you know, or a person that's not of color? How are they going to take this word? You know, this is my truth. I am writing my truth. I live these things. We live these things. These are our world. And, and, and so, of course, I write my words. I, I think about, like with anything, when you write to children, you must think of the choices of every word you choose. Um, I think, but um, I, I don't want to soften the truth uh, because children get it, you know, they do. If they can get Hansel and Gretel, for heaven's sake, put something in the oven, you mean, Denise, let's talk about this. <laughs> These are things that they need to wake. The, the truth of the world is, is much more important. Uh, and and it be known because uh, we fight with the, the fighting that we're going through. I think we constantly struggle in the world is that, well, people just don't understand. They don't know. They haven't been told. They haven't, you know, it's, I don't believe children are, are brought up but are initially uh, inherently that's what you know have these sort of unwoken tendencies. I think they're all woke. Baby, like Mahogany's book, Woke a Baby. Babies are, they get it. It's just what happens when the big people get involved that unwoke wake them. And they can't have that unwake. <laughs> anyway, that's what I do. So. <laughs> that's, that's a bumper sticker. I'm ready for it. <laughs> Adults get in the way. I absolutely yes. agree. Um, I'm constantly uh, engaging with uh, oppressive spaces and voices. Um, and so I write anyway. I would, when Woke Baby received um, hate mail, and like literally mm -hmm. that was a poem about a baby waking up and all these little small actions that look like, oh, you're just stretching. No, that's really you reaching to break glass ceilings. I thought, oh, mm -hmm. how adorable, you know, woke baby, the baby that never sleeps and parents, you, you already know that, that joke. Um, <laughs> so for that to be, to be considered uh, offensive, um, it, it landed on some, some anti list where they said, don't buy this book for babies because it turns them into liberals. Oh. For so shame. then I thought, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> That's what it does. Oh, all right. Well, so you. Then, yeah. I'm gonna buy I'm gonna buy this book whenever I see it because now I have to give it as gift everywhere I go. <laughs> if Perfect. If that's, if that's easy, if it's that easy, sure. Um, but yeah, I realized people that come for me or the people that come for any kind of truth, whether you're talking about environmentalism, whether you're talking about um, urban planning, whether you're talking about gentrification, anytime 
I can find something wrong with children's lit because it's just too, it's too much for kids. Then I already know like, you're exactly who needs this book. You probably need this book when you were a kid. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so um, I, I, I accept the challenge gladly. Mm-hmm. Bravo. I love well, that. Yeah. That's, that's powerful. Um, I know Carol and I, yeah, we talk about, because we're s- still relatively newcomers to the industry, I, I would say. So, you know, as we're writing our, our future books and working on other projects, I am constantly like, I want to write about what I'm inspired by, which is culture and place and kinship to land and community. But I also wanted to have a wide uh, appeal, you know, so it's, it's walking this um, tightrope sometimes. Uh, and I don't want to offend anybody and I want people to embrace it, but I also want to speak the truth like Carol was saying and you're saying mahogany. So, right, it is just accepting the challenge and, and knowing you're not going to make everybody happy ever. Um, and just keeping in mind who you're, who you're creating for. And it's mm-hmm. those, those little children, um, us when we were little, who, who never really saw themselves in books, um, part mm-hmm. of that 1% of, for us, 1% of indigenous representation in books. Um, just working and you know, keeping that in, in our minds, our hearts at all times. And I came across really a uh, great quote by um, an indigenous, uh, what a group is it? Indigenous Youth for Tsuitsin. And so they say, in protecting the lands from industrial development, we are protecting our bodies from violence. And mm. so that's just a good thing to keep in mind too. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that, that helps yeah. us just trying to keep Beautiful. those, those messages uh, near. Yeah. And also, I really love that um, we're, I love talking to kids because I'm learning more and more that kids check the adults. When mm-hmm. adults are doing it wrong, there is your moral compass looking at you. And if we have yes. these conversations in uh, kindergarten, in preschool, yes. small things you have to share, you have to be considerate. It's not yours. Like those things, they yes. grow to be bigger things. And mm-hmm. when they start applying them to the adults in their lives, they yes. then become that barometer, right? They become yeah. the barometer, not just for goodness, but for justice. Yeah, well, that's yeah. that's why children's literature is so dangerous, right? That's why people yeah. are trying to get you to not bring up those themes because it is very dangerous. We, I remember, I, I believe it was, um, I, I, I believe it was Kate D. Camillo once. I heard her speak, and she said something about writing for children is as close as you can t- be to being under that blanket with the flashlight, with the kid directly whispering mm-hmm. into their ear. But that's a scary thought for a lot yeah. of people, right? You're allowing us to speak to your children, and you know, going back to the why of why we do this. Like I, I vacillate quite often between, you know, what does this even matter? <laughs> writing mm-hmm. children's books, and also. Yeah thinking that this is the most noble profession in the world. It Uh is the most noble profession. We are starting, not to use a garden metaphor, but we're starting with those seeds, with kids in hopes that whatever we can plant now will be nourished and supported to be able to grow in the future for something that could hopefully lead to a better society. You know, I don't mean to be all Pollyanna about it, but... No, but there are true. often times that I just say to my students all the time, I teach a lot of adults about writing for children. And I'm like, this is the most noble profession you could have in the entire world. And yes, it's dangerous and scary for some people to think of us doing that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. You know, when you, someone just said what I was thinking about in, in teaching in schools and whatnot. And I think I remember when my son was in um, like kindergarten or pre-K or maybe even he used to come home um, and you know talk about how they're going to be learning about money. And I was thinking, why? <laughs> I mean, seriously, at this age, the, that's really the last of your concern. OK, let's talk about being empathetic. You know, let's talk. I mean, yes, those things come home from home. But when you're in school, too, these are when you're around your peers. These are around your other children. You need to. This stuff has, is important now. This this whole thing of caring and respect and like why are those like considered not a part of, I don't know. And those things are and in, in, in speaking up and in, in making and I don't know. Those are like key to me. That's more important than learning about money because money isn't helping us a bit now. I mean, <laughs> for a darn bit, the gosh blasted bit now. So, okay. you know, it's more about, it's respect and yes. Just our, we're, we're uh, time. Oh. 
Sorry. <laughs> Come down. <laughs> oh, oh, I love you guys. Oh, it's been so, so passionate. It's with you. you. I'm going to hug you all. For being here and joining us with, uh, here at Everywhere Book Fest. We really appreciate yeah. it. Um, please research more and, and dig into more of the backgrounds of everybody here. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. I hope I see you soon in person. <laughs>